Fire and Earth podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Gruber. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Welcome to another episode of the Fire and Earth podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason Mefford. And I'm Kathy Groover, and I'm so excited to have one of our favorite guests back, a really good friend of mine, an incredible hypnotherapist, the wizard of uh, graphology, which is handwriting analysis, which is what we're going to talk about today. It's such a cool thing. I'm so excited. And I brought a sample for uh, Mike to look at. So we're, we're so excited to welcome back Mike Mandel to the show. I am thrilled to be here. This is the third time I've been on your podcast, and we had an absolute blast last time. In fact, um, I love the way your podcast is video because ours ah. is, you know, we do ours on the cheap. Ours is just audio. Although Chris has got us moving to video in the new year. We just got a whole bunch of new backdrop and everything for it. As you can see here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've invested significantly in a new building. Yeah. yeah, yeah so you're not on location in Transylvania. <laughs> Small cathedral built. Um, <laughs> but yeah, graphology is, is something that fascinates me. And um, I'll say this right up front. That the handwriting never lies. It never freaking lies. And um, it's one of the hardest things to get through your head when you start to study this scientifically, but it will prove itself again and again and again. And the times I've forgotten that it never lies are the times that I've made mistakes and suffered as a result of it. Yeah. But we'll get there. That's where yeah. you want to start. Well, and it's it, uh, just to that point, I've had people say, oh, it's bullshit. No, it doesn't mean anything. And I said, but wait, didn't we all learn the exact same letters the exact same way? And they go, yeah. oh, yeah. And I said, so why don't we all look like that in the book when we <laughs> learned to do? Because my handwriting is atrocious. It is horrible. And I've I've done some graphology with it, and I've had other people do it. And it's like, it, it's totally me. It, it absolutely fits. <laughs> so, I mean, tell us kind of like where this came from. I know you did some stuff with forensic graphology, and then I'll show you can tell us some of the um, common things to look for, and then I'll sure. show you the sample. You can tell me what yeah, this looks yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, it sounds great. Well, graphology has an interesting <clears throat> history to it, and I came to it in about 1992. Um, interestingly, I, I knew nothing about it. I thought it was woo-woo, just nuts and stupid. I didn't know it is a, sub, a subset in a soft science already, which is psychology. I didn't know then that it's based on large numbers like any science, thousands upon thousands of samples. In fact, Heidelberg, Germany, um, Paris, France, at Sorbonne, you can get a degree in this in some places in Europe. And it's mainstream in Europe for hiring and firing still to this day. So what I mean by it's done by large numbers is they would look at the writing, they, the ubiquitous, they would look at the writing of, you know, a thousand high achievers. What, what are the commonalities in their writing? Uh, 200 people committed suicide, you know, 1500 people who come from broken homes and they start to gradually figure out these aspects of the personality and then determine we can make predictions based on this. Let's see if they work. And so again, it, it's based on large numbers like any other science. It's not just pulled out of thin air. Although there are a number of, of graphology books, we'll say that right up front, that are just crap. They're, they're not well done. People invent their own systems. There's a science to it though. And if you follow the science, it's great. So I didn't know any of this. 1992, 1993, I had, um, I had a gift certificate from a bookstore in Toronto. It was actually called the world's biggest bookstore because it was at that time. It was huge, great oh. store. I spent hours there. My stepmother had given me this thing. I was just sitting there. We, I went to the store, I was looking around, and I see this book, and it's on handwriting analysis. My wife says, why don't you get that? I went, oh, yeah, maybe. Sat my shelf for like a year or two. And then one day I took it off the shelf, started reading it. Went, wow, wow, wow. Got fascinated by it. So she phoned around and found I could do a one-day intensive with this woman, Elaine Cheryl. Elaine Cheryl is Canada's best graphologist, without a doubt. Personal friend now. I did her one-day intensive. And uh, she thought I had a knack for it. So I wound up becoming certified through the International Grapple Analysis Society out of Chicago. And then went to the, you know, the convention there, spent a week there doing a, you know, a week long internship with all the stuff I'd done, did all the online the exams and so on. And graduated with something like 98%. I found I had a knack for it and started mentioning it in my brain software lectures and so on. And I found it, it is mind blowing. Let me give, give you an example of how mind blowing it is. I did a gig three actually for Neil Strauss, the New York Times bestselling author, wrote about pickup artists and everything, really interesting guy. So we had one in uh, Lowe's in Hollywood. So did this keynote for him and some training and we got into the handwriting. 
and this, they're all look, having me look at their writing. One guy comes up and he's a medical doctor and I can tell he's very skeptical. And he said, so what does my writing show? Hands me his writing. And I said, oh, not much other than I'm just wondering what you do uh, to control that almost uncontrollable sexual aggression that dominates your life. He just goes <laughs> bright red and he went, holy shit. And walked away. That was it. <laughs> but it gets even better. Listen to this. Uh, Hypnothoughts Live, best hypnosis mm -hmm. convention in the world, Las, Las Vegas, where we do the bowling and we have such a blast. And Scott and Richard do a great job. I did a day long graphology training there. And on the break, as usual, they're sticking samples under my nose. And one woman hands me the sample. This is exactly what happened. And the sample had the personal pronoun I really screwed up. Let me get a Sharpie here. I'll go through the background. Um, <laughs> Where'd you go, Mike? Where'd you go? Oh, so, really out. so here we go. So the personal pronoun I, which copybook, Palmer method, it's going to get it. As I'll look at my own screen. Yeah, there we go. Like that. Okay. Yep. Peckers. Peckers of hell. Why is it doing that? You know, it's probably something to do with that damnable background I've got there. <laughs> there you go. So in, in personal pronoun I, this tells as much. The This is called the sale. The upright is the sale. That's yep. the relationship with father. You can see it as an erect penis, symbolically. This is the womb of mother. All right. Ooh. Now, interestingly, you can tell the relationship with the parents by how they do the personal pronoun I. And with this particular person, Ooh. when she had my eye. writing, this was... This was what her personal pronoun Ooh, I looked like. She has father issues. So she pushes the right in front of me, woman in her 50s. And I just said to her, darling, I said, what on earth happened to your dad? She said, he was murdered. And oh. everyone was like, whoa, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. The stuff that is coming out. And again, you know, North America wide, me living in Canada, as a Brit living in Canada, you guys in the US, we learned the Palmer method. And Palmer was a nut bar. So her freaking writing, she's a control freak. She was bound by incredible jealousy. She repressed her emotions. <laughs> it's not the kind of stuff you want to copy because when you copy the traits, they appear in your personality over time. But they so, do. So, so that that's a great question. So I've heard people say this, and you could tell me if it's true or not. I don't know that our audience has heard this that you can actually start to adjust your personality by adjusting your handwriting. Yes, graphotherapy is fairly well established now because it is not your hand that writes. It's an extremely complex neuromuscular function that begins somewhere in the, I think, the neocortex or something. The bottom line is a signal comes from the brain, travels down the arm to the hand, fine motor skills, we write, based on the outworking of our personality. However, and it's a big however, if we change the handwriting, we are now sending a signal back in this psychodynamic loop back into the brain, the brain changes. Perfect example, mm -hmm. right after, uh, I've been a graphologist for a long time and I, determined to make some changes in my own handwriting, which were very useful. Elaine told me to complete the lower loops. So the lower loops are in G's and Y's and things like that. I'll see if I can get one on your screen for you here. A lower loop. Okay, I'll get it there. See the top one, I've got the neck mm -hmm. now. That's what a lower loop should be like, large, well-formed. Yep. It also shows you the size of your social circle, how many people you need around you. And people with huge lower loops need huge social circles. People with no lower loop can be very, very solitary and mm -hmm. they can manage their own company. They don't get cabin fever if they're stuck in a, you know, a three week storm, they're okay. <laughs> but the problem is the no lower loop, if you see the baseline that the letter rests on and then the, the loop descends below it, the baseline is the line of conscious awareness. Everything down below the circle of that G, which is sitting on the baseline, everything below it is unconscious and everything down there is very, very interesting. So if I'm seeing lower loops, you know, <laughs> this, this is called a coil. You don't see it very often. That's a really nasty trait. That's somebody who will F your life up pretty bad. And of course, the my favorite for the nasty ones, this one, the felon's claw. Yeah. Where it, has, it has to have a point, must have a point in order to qualify. The felon's claw is found in the handwriting of something like 80% of uh, inmates in the U.S. penitentiary system. And so it's not something you want to add to your writing. I tell people you have that, remove it. But so back to this whole graphotherapy thing, I had this, you know, I made some changes in my writing. My lower loops, Elaine looked at them and she said, this, these are thoughts that are not making it your conscious awareness. They're stuck in the unconscious. You've got all this creativity. It's not getting out there. 
complete those loops, make them large, make them cross the baseline. I did, became a freaking creative monster. You know, yeah. MMHA engaged, we do all this stuff, our podcast, our newbie thing, and you know, mind scaping and all this stuff. It just, wow, I got more ideas now that we can use. Yeah, that's my job is to create content. So among other things. So one of the things I changed in my writing was I saw the literary D and I highly recommend you both put this in your writing. It's beautiful. The literary D is a small letter D, but instead of like I'm drawn at the top, it'll be one of these that you'll see on the bottom, something more like this. Okay, so I'll get it. there we are. So the top is a typical small letter D. These mm -hmm. can look like a musical note, like a six or whatever. Anyway, these Ds, the bottom line is you start in the middle and work outward from there to the tail, okay? Mm -hmm. That's the sequencing. This, I was in the British Museum in London, England. I got to look at the writing of Samuel Johnson, Lewis Carroll, Dickens. They all have the literary D, all of them. Way with words and writing ability. So I wound up putting that in my writing. Way with words and writing ability, forgot about it. Absolutely forgot about it. And then um, the weirdest thing happened. I was explaining something to my wife and I, I wound up, oh, I need these books. I got to get this for my, my course. I drove, went down to world's biggest bookstore again figures in all these stories and I needed to get a stack of books for this training and instead I came back with about six hardcover poetry books Byron Keats Shelley my wife said what's with the poetry I said I get it I said I opened it and he said she walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climbs and starry skies and all that's best to dark and light meet in her aspect and her eyes thus mellow to that tender light which heaven to gaudy day denies Kenneth Branagh so she says, you idiot, you put the literary D in your writing months ago, you forgot about it. All of a sudden, poetry <laughs> that I didn't have a freaking clue, it was of zero interest to me. Mm -hmm. I, I understood it. It's like a machine as I'm reading it. It's going inside now like a hypnotic induction. I wound up founding the Valdemar group, which was a poetry group in Toronto. And we would meet and write together. <laughs> Just got nuts. One of my short stories won a prize and was printed by the Toronto Star. I mean, it's change your writing, change your personality, change your personality, you change your life. And wow. I recommend everybody put the literary D in. It's a great thing to have. That's so cool. Okay, so I have three questions uh, that I hear commonly. So, whoops, as I wax up off my wall. So if the writing slopes downward as you're writing it versus sloping upward as you're writing it, and also the signature and like crossing yourself out and that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, writing that gently slopes down is someone whose mood is kind of on a downswing. It doesn't mean they were depressed, but writing that is level is level emotions and writing that slopes upward tends to bring in optimism. Now, any trait that is out of, is done too much, is not a good thing. So when we see optimism where it's like almost, you know, a diagonal on the page, 45 degrees, that's, that's overcompensation for something as someone who's trying to be optimistic. So, <laughs> Even that will come out, but a gentle upslope, you'll see it also in the, the T bars of the small letter T. If they're upslanted, you're bringing in optimism. In fact, one of the best things your listeners and viewers can do with your own handwriting, complete those lower loops and make your T bars high up on the stem, long and pointed slightly upward. Make sure they're touching the stem. The height of your T bars will show you how high you set your goals in life. And you want to set high goals. You don't want to be just struggling. If you get low, low goals, it's low self-esteem showing up in the writing. People with no different distant plans. I got real fast at this, guys, because I used to do a lecture called, uh, only about five years ago, called Are You Dating a Psychopath? And I do this through the college <laughs> circuit, talk about some of the yeah, cases. Yeah, were you 20 years, years ago? <laughs> right. So what we do is I do a lecture on psychopathy and um, would then teach the psychopathic traits shown in handwriting. And people would then bring me their own writing. And I'd do like 60 kids, graphology, in like two minutes each, just one after another. And if, if a couple came up together, it would be amazing. The guy has inflated pea stems, that's physicality, but he's also got extreme jealousy and aggression. I said, bro, you've got to get your jealousy under control or you're going to kill somebody and wind up in jail. She turns to him and said, I told you! <laughs> it's just great. So. We said now the, the signature is another one you just brought up. The way to understand the signature is this. The personality shows up in the handwriting. So the, the typical writing, ideally written on uh, unlined paper with mm -hmm. their favorite pen or pencil. Nobody writes anymore, but you still can. And so typical handwriting will give the actual personality, whereas the signature gives the personality on parade. This is the 
This is the mask people wear in public. This is the public person, whereas the writing is the private person. So imagine one, one of the traits that goes with introversion is tiny, tiny writing. It's also extremely high concentration. Sure. So if someone has tiny writing, they have great powers of concentration. You can put them to work in a room surrounded by people and they won't be distracted. You get somebody with huge writing, they're much more aware of their surroundings. They're monitoring every conversation that's going on. Their concentration isn't great. But let's say you got tiny writing and a big signature. This is someone who can make a presentation of being so out there and in your face and, you know, but in reality, they are completely withdrawn in their personality. Yeah. You're not getting the real thing. Ideally, with a partner, either business, or romantic, whatever, you want their handwriting to look very much, if not identical to their signature. Because yeah. what that says yeah. is you're not getting any persona. What you see yeah. is exactly what you get. Yeah. And if you're scratching through your signature, as Kathy just asked, that's a really bad thing. If you write your full name, none of it should be X through. That's a bad, bad thing. In fact, for women, if you see a woman's signature and she's married and has taken her husband's surname, if she crosses out the surname, it means their marriage is on the rocks. You'll also see it when the surname and the first name move further and further apart over time in the signature. They're getting distant in their relationship without any question. And um, with a man, if he crosses out the surname, of course, if he crosses the entire name out, he's down on himself. If he crosses out the surname, it will be his father or his family that he has issues with. Mm -hmm. My driver in England, I had a couple of minders. I did five tours of um, universities there. I used to do hypnosis or lecture every night, except Sunday for two weeks in a row. It was exhausting. So I had drivers who were Thames Valley police drove me everywhere. One of them, Paul, was just a riot. Paul Giles, 300 pounds, six foot seven, one of the funniest human beings I've ever met. And uh, people would say, you're not like any policeman I've ever met. He'd go, well, no, I'm a different sort of policeman. I am. I'm a little bit, whoa, a little bit, whoa. <laughs> it just freaked people out. Anyway, so we have a great sense of humor. We're in the car. And he says, what does my signature show? Hence his driver's, no, his warrant, police warrant card over, which is like their license. And there's a signature. First name, Paul. Second name. <laughs> I said, um, any issues with your dad? He goes, um. Only every single day for the last 30 years. <laughs> Just great. It's, it still freaks me out. It still amazes mm -hmm. me. One of my teachers, Bill Harms, I don't know if he's still alive, out of Chicago. He talked about a guy who they were involved in at church when he started learning graph graphoanalysis, which is the trademark term. He uh, saw all kinds of really bad stuff in this guy's writing. And everyone said, no, 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 there's no way. There's no way. No, he's fine. He's fine. Two years later, embezzlement goes to jail. It's like, crazy that you can tell from ambiguous numbers the uh, embezzler do ambiguous numbers is that a six or is it a squiggle what is that a one or a seven uh, comes out we'll see we'll see that's why because in my career right how i'd gotten introduced to handwriting analysis <clears throat> was from the forensic and fraud standpoint so we'd right. be doing investigations right one of the reasons why you have people do handwritten confessions is for that same reason, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and trying to have it. So that's what that's why when Kathy was like, hey, Mike wants to talk about handwriting analysis. I'm like, cool, I wanna see how he's gonna tie this in because I've only had the other side to it. But this whole right. side with, you know, graphotherapy, being able mm -hmm. to actually change ourselves, but also, you know, I'm guessing as well as a, as a therapist, analyzing somebody's handwriting to be able to help pinpoint in on where they need the help, right? Yes, absolutely. One of my students is a psychologist in Spain and um, Spain or Portugal, I can't remember. He sent me uh, an email and said, I got an attachment. He said, this is one of my patients. He said, is this person suicidal? And I looked at his writing and all the upper zones where the T's and the L's and the H's go, that's all abstract thinking. It's also your moral code. And uh, it's, it was extremely long and the lower zones were almost non-existent. The middle zone was constricted, which is day-to-day -day relationships and friendships and so on. The upper zone was excessive. I said, this is a guy who lives in nothing but theories. I said, he lives yeah. in his head. He's totally antisocial. He said, yeah, he said, you won't believe it. He said, he's a PhD in theoretical physics and mm -hmm. this shows in his writing, but he was suicidal. And yeah. the way you determine that it's a terrifying trait. I've only run into it a couple of times. You see the end of a line of writing end of a line of writing on a page, oh, fairly consistent. And then suddenly one word will just dip at the end of a line. And then it mm. goes back to straight. That is the number one predictor of successful suicide, not doing it to, you know, an attempt to get attention, right. but successful. And the other one that, you know, through the, the 
signature. And then maybe I should look at that sample you want me to look at. Yeah. The other one through the signature, there's a stroke in handwriting where if the end, it, it's great to underline your signature. Everybody should underline their signature with a single left to right underscore, just one, not going through the name. It's okay mm -hmm. to go through the descending letters, but just underline the name. That brings in self-reliance, the ability to go it alone when you have to. And it's very, very strong. And it's uh, one of the leadership traits as is enthusiasm, which is a long T-bar. So it's a great one for everybody to have. But suppose they do finish the name and then they use the end, the last letter and come back through their name and then back out again. That yeah. is so specific. It's called the bullet through the rifle through the bullet through the head stroke, rifle bullet through the head stroke. And Tom, um, what's his name? Uh, Hunter S. Thompson, before he killed himself, Gonzo journalist, his signature changed. You can look at it online. He had the yeah. bullet through the head stroke, killed himself with a rifle bullet through the head. Um, Hemingway. Same thing, Same. signature change, put that stroke in, blew his brains out with a rifle. I was at a small community college working with kids, like doing the demos for them and looking at their writing and giving them you know, recommendations of what they should change in their handwriting. And the, they all left and I was packing up and the custodian came over and he was a stocky guy. He had tattoos that were not like these beautiful clean ones that I have. They looked like freaking jail art. Like they were done with a ballpoint pen and a razor blade. And he said, can you look at my writing? I said, sure, we sat down. He had the suicide thing at the end of the line. I've only seen it twice. That was the first time. And he had the bullet through the head stroke in his signature. I wow. said, dude, have you got uh, you got any rifles in your house? He said, yeah, I got a few. I said, you ever think you use them on yourself? He said, yeah, it crosses my mind from time to time. I said, buddy, and I showed him and the writing he was really surprised. I said, you've got to get that shit out of your writing. And as far as I know, nothing happened to him. So, Wow. <laughs> Yeah, so I have, um, I actually have two things I want you to look at. So can, am sure. I allowed to, can I share my screen, Jason? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're asking him. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I didn't know if I had permission to do that. Okay, so can you see that? I've got a very, okay. This is unusual because it's all over another background. Mm -hmm. So that's going to immediately make it difficult. Um, we also have different writing instruments used. So... Oh gosh, he had a lot of analytical ability, a lot to analyze extremely well. It seems to be hinting at some diplomatic ability too, which is the ability to smooth things over with other people when necessary. But there's a lot of deep emotions here. Um, too much on the go, like <sighs> overwhelm. It's hard to say because ideally we want online paper and their right. typical, their typical writing. It's a hell of well, a this is how he that. takes all of his notes. He grabs wow. some other piece of paper that's already got stuff on it and uses yeah. that as scratch paper. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, the, you can see the size of it. Some of it is very small. So mm -hmm. we're seeing some good, strong powers of concentration there. So it's not surprising, is it? Somebody who's able to sort that out. But we're seeing print writing too, like some of it's writing, some of it's printing. So that again, it kind of muddies the water a little bit. I'd love yeah. to see an original. Yeah. Is there, there is, because I, I half print and half cursive. Yeah, that's pretty typical. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty typical. Yeah. All right. What's that look like to you? <laughs> this is out of control aggression. Um, somebody who doesn't listen to other people, who's able to be a, a bully, who's able to, it's got the club stroke both at the beginning and at the end. And those downstrokes have a clubbed ending. That's cruelty. Um, the extreme angles, when you think angle, think anger. This mm -hmm. is someone who drives ahead, pushes ahead, and it's clearly uh, smudged as well, meaning appetites that can get out of control. Very deep emotion, resentment that will be carried forever, able to analyze things to death only when it's to advantage. It's Donald Trump's signature. You'd never be able to read that one, boy. <laughs> you, see, you see the up and left, like the up and down jagged? Yeah. Angles. Angles are anger. And we're seeing analytical ability and sourcing ability. This is, um, yeah, the club strokes, huh? yeah. the downstrokes. Jackie uh, Kennedy had the club strokes the same too. The mm. downstrokes, the ability to be cruel and uh, controlling with other, yeah, this is, this has got control all over it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I just, cause I thought, uh, because for, we're filming this on January 7th. So yesterday was, um, 
sort of a hellish day in America. <laughs> so I thought, yes, I yeah, his, uh, I heard, so I heard. Yeah, I wonder what his signature looks like. Interesting. It's so, okay, there's I'm not even stop. a D in it. There's no D that I can even see. I guess no, that's well, there's a nothing in there. You I mean, kinda, you kind of got a little bit of a D, but it never closes, right? Yeah, yeah so really this is tall kind of, and angled. Yeah, huh. yeah, I guess that's a D. I don't know. Oh, What's well, interesting here too, you see the, the second uh, tall peak. So the first, if it's the D, then in the same name, it will be the L, okay? Oh, so that, you see yeah. the L? Yep. The retracing in that, the heavy retracing mm -hmm. is repressed emotions. Yeah, there's no loop. Stuff. There's yeah. no loop in the L, yeah. No. And I guess that's the J. Yeah, or is that the T? Yeah. Or that's, I mean, that's there's probably no... the T that's not crossed through. Well, but is that the cross? I mean, that's what's interesting. Mm. Well, but that's there's almost like lot, an, an open D. The, the overwhelming thing, the overwhelming thing is the angles and the depth. By depth, we call it color, meaning just how thick the lines are, how much yeah. smeared ink is there, is incredible emotional depth. Emotional depth is someone who can hold a grudge forever. Yeah, I think we've proven that one. Okay, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. It's only his signature though. So perhaps in real life, he's not like that. We'd have to look at the rest of the writing. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of writing on the wall for that character, but anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, Jason, <laughs> that, that, uh... Jason, any questions for, for yeah, Mike? Yeah, well, I, I wanted to ask, cause I know, I know we're gonna have to kind of wrap up here um, fairly quick, but I, I know there, there's been a transition from you know what the cursive if you mm -hmm. will writing that we all learned growing up and i was talking with one of my you know 25 year old stepson and you know he was he, he tried to make a christmas he, he likes to draw christmas cards for us right so nice. so he, he was he was trying to do like this cursive merry christmas and it was just really all all garbled and then he kind of wrote fuck cursive and did everything else <laughs> in letters right yeah. but 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 no and i mean it was funny but in talking to him, literally, the, he was never really taught cursive and he mm -hmm. has difficulty, as I'm guessing most younger people do, because I think they even quit teaching cursive in school. Yeah. Down here. They did. They stopped teaching cursive. They stopped teaching grammar here in Canada. And um, it's really unfortunate because the Palmer Method is an okay foundation for learning from. But part of brain development requires fine motor skills yeah and one of the things that is lost when kids do not learn cursive writing is they lose a lot of cause and effect thinking too it is part yeah. of the brain development there's an entire book written on this it's called what we lost or something it's not the title but it's something like that so I'm trying to find it again and it's all about how taking away cursive writing how it's having a, a tremendously bad effect on kids when i yeah. over the years that i've done these lectures the, the graphology lectures in the university circuit I'm looking at kids writing now and some of them can can barely even print you know it's it's really unfortunate we're seeing i'm seeing a ton of low self-esteem and uh, mm -hmm. poor thinking skills and then again the exception is i was at sheridan college in the west end of toronto and the kids there mostly southeast asian and they had amazing writing skills really high t-bars incredible high achievers so there is a yeah. correlation there somewhere. And hey, I want to remember to say that we have a special promotion for your awesome listeners. <laughs> I have my entire online graphology training. And maybe you can put a link to this on your Yeah, of course. Yeah. If you want. But I have an entire online graphology training, which was taught in, in, in Toronto at the University of Toronto. I, we rent space there. I'm not part of the university. But um, we taught a class there and the notes that come with it. But it, Mostly it's a live class you're seeing all edited down. And then I believe we supplemented it with the entire class I taught in Las Vegas. So both of them are in the product. Um, you can go to Mike Mandel with one L, MikeMandelHypnosis.com forward slash graphology. And it's there. And for anybody listening you're, um, to this podcast, we've given you the promo code, which is, let's get it right. I said earth and fire, didn't I? Yes, earth and fire as one word with no, I've got all these little things now. Earth and fire <laughs> with no word, with no spaces, um, all lowercase. So that's promo code. If you enter that, you get a hundred bucks off the training. Nice. Is it fire and earth or earth and fire? It is, what's the name of the podcast? Fire, fire and earth. earth. Fire and earth. No, it's fire and earth. 
Oh, yeah. Okay, just want to make sure that we get it right. Can you see it? I got a check mark. That's the right one. Disappear I never get. I message. never get first billing, so it was exciting <laughs> for a second. Fire and earth. <laughs> Sorry, we 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 did it. Yeah. Anyway, I we, know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> wow. Well, this. I mean, this has been <laughs> entertaining, but way educational too. Because again, it's you know, I never realize the the impact it can have from a therapeutic standpoint, but also for a, you know, changing your personality by changing yes. how yes. you write as well. Yeah. And, and how important it is. So I'm sitting here cause I'm, I'm usually always a note taker. So now I'm sitting here going, Oh, how are my T are my T bars high? Are they going up into the right? <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here. Starting right to out, words at writing. the end of the line dropping. Yeah. 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 It'll serve you very well. And it's a great skill for therapists because um, I've got a client today in Australia. I very seldom see them, but he's already emailed me his handwriting or emailed it, sent us an attachment. So I'll be looking at that. I'll know who he is before I meet with him. Yeah, so that's, that's so great. And when I did my hypnosis training, we did an entire like three part course on, on graphology. And when I have my clients do affirmations or write out goals or write out shopping lists, write it in cursive. It goes directly to the subconscious as opposed to typing it with fingers or thumb, you know, all that stuff. So, you got it. Uh, you yeah, got no, it. My, my boyfriend was very excited to see what you thought of his handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't like say, oh. I'll tell you what. Get me, get me a real sample on yep. online paper, signed and dated, send it to me, and I'll be more than happy to evaluate it for you. Yeah, I wish to look at mine too, because we were going to do that and I never sent it to you, so. Not a problem. Yay. Oh, this has been so fun. I just, well, I love you, Mike. You're just so, I love such you a too, babe. You know, I know. Jason and, I just, and I are homies. We're homies, man. <laughs> I just, I love that you're so willing to share all this info. I actually took your graphology class in Vegas. So I'm excited that that's, that's included with that. It's just so good. So um, everybody go, go to Mike's site. We'll put everything in the lower thirds. We'll put everything in the show notes and uh, check out your handwriting. See what it looks like. <laughs> um, I'm Kathy Groover. I can be reached at kathygroover.com. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. So go out, get Mike's course and start being a little bit more conscious about how you're actually writing and what that might mean about what you're doing. And if you want to change, change what you're doing, you know, go back, listen to this again, because Mike dropped some big bombs out there that if you just actually start taking some of the things he said, even today, you'll start making a difference. So uh, we'll catch you on the next episode of the Fire and Earth podcast. See ya. Thanks a lot. Yeah.